Mm -mm. <sighs> so um, I bought an old Swedish drill press and it needs a little bit of love. So let me really quickly run through all the things that we're gonna do in this video. First off, this is a lovely old Swedish made drill press from a company called Arboga. They're super good and meant to last a really long time. It needs a little love, but I'm sure after we're done with it, it's gonna be a machine that we can enjoy for many, many years to come. Okay, so as you can see, the machine itself is a little dirty. We need to clean that up. It's quite rusty. We need to do something with that. And there's a few bits and pieces that are either missing or not installed. So the things that we need to tackle are a general cleanup, rust removal, there's a missing handle for the height adjustment of the head. There's a few missing knobs and handles for the locking mechanism of both the head and the table. There's a bunch of stuff missing from in here. We need the switch and the return spring that makes sure that this thing stays up. And we'll need to make a new table for it. And on this side, we've got a handle that doesn't want to slide around anymore and is also missing the knob at the end. We've got a few broken oil ports and we've got some electrical issues that we also need to deal with. So I think a good start is to give the whole thing just a good thorough cleaning and then we'll take it from there. I would say that that was a good first pass at cleaning this machine, getting all the old dirt and grime off of there. Luckily, it wasn't nearly as bad as that old bridge port over there. Make sure to check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. So cleaning it with soap and degreaser might work pretty well to get old oil and grease off, but the column right here is unfortunately quite rusty. And to get this off, I'm gonna use the same trick I used in the bridge port video, a generous amount of WD-40 or something equivalent and a scotch pad pad on one of these old sanders that I had laying around. And that'll do the trick. That really helped. My God, it feels so good to get all that rust and old grease and grime off of this machine. Luckily, not nearly as bad as with the old bridge port. Took only a few hours this time. So now it's time to deal with the issues that we've got with the machine. And before I do anything else, I really want to figure out if the machine even works. Because right now, I've just got these wires loosely hanging out. <laughs> and the other side of this, I think, ends up in this cable. I did get a new switch that is supposed to be the right one. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time, get everything wired up, make sure that everything works, and then we can start tackling the other issues with the machine. So I'm just taking off this box right here. This used to be on and off main power switch, and we don't need this box. We've got the original one still right here. So you might wonder why is there no switch here and why isn't the machine running? Well, let me tell you, some things should be left up to the professionals. I spent a whole bunch of time wearing all this up. I got the machine to run in one of the speeds, but not the other. And then I tried a whole bunch of things, didn't work. Then found out that I had the wrong switch and spent the last three hours. <laughs> Long story short, definitely don't take this as a guide on how we're meant to do electronics. I'm by no means a professional. And you should probably leave this work up to professionals. So we're gonna deal with this later once I get a new switch. And now we're gonna start building some other things. So as you can see, there's no table on this drill press. Don't know where it went, 
but it's not here. So instead of trying to get a hold of an original cast iron table for this drill press, which tend to get really expensive, we're just gonna make our own. And no, we're not gonna cast any steel, we're gonna make a nice big MDF table for it. So now to the reason why I'm holding this steel pipe. So you see this pipe almost fits into this hole, and I think the walls of the pipe are thick enough so we can take a little bit of the outside diameter off with the lathe and then have this fit. And once this fits into the hole, we can weld on a sheet of steel on the top onto which we can then bolt our MDF table that we're gonna make. And then to clamp everything in place, we can use the original clamping mechanism to clamp a bolt and a nut in between here. So I've got the section of the pipe mounted in the lathe here. We need to remove less than a millimeter off the outer dimension of this, so I'm just gonna take it nice and slowly, take off the outside until the measurement is right, and then also clean up the ends a little bit. After that, hopefully it should fit into the hole. Ah, ooh, ah, warm, warm, warm. Ah. Ha! <laughs> now that this fits, let's head over to another workshop and weld the steel plate on top of it. So we made our way over to the school workshop where I've cut myself two nice big pieces of flat stock and I also found this piece of square tubing that perfectly that perfectly fits inside of the tube that we just turned down. So I'm gonna weld this piece of square tubing on the inside of this pipe to give it a little bit more rigidity and making sure everything is nice and flat and clamped against the table. We're gonna weld this pipe to the center of this and then weld everything together. I'm back in the workshop and this thing is done. Now, let's see if it fits. I am very pleased with that, it actually fits. Now, unfortunately, it isn't quite as flat or straight as I would like it to be. I didn't clamp these two down firmly enough so they twisted on me a little bit. Now, that's okay because as you've seen, I've cut out this piece of 30 mil thick MDF and this is gonna serve as a nice big table for the drill press. So now we need a way of attaching this table to the metal one we built and by doing that, we're also gonna build in an adjustability so that we can level the table and make sure that it's perfectly flat relative to the head right here. So we're gonna bolt these two together using a couple of 10 millimeter bolts that will go through a hole that we're gonna drill into the steel plate and they go into a couple of these threaded inserts that will go into the MDF. And that way we can use the threads on the bolts to adjust and level the bed. I'm sure that will make more sense in a second. Let's start assembling this and then we'll get it installed. I haven't adjusted it yet, we're gonna do that later, but basically the way that it is gonna work is that this bolt spins freely in the steel plate and if we turn it, it screws more or less into the thread insert into the MDF and that way we can adjust all four corners to be completely level. 
But for now, it's just test assembled. We're gonna make this a little bit nicer. We're gonna take it apart again, put some oil on the top, round over the edges, and maybe paint the edges as well. The MDF table has a layer of oil on it and the base plane is painted. Now I also want to paint this metal piece right here, but I don't want to paint it in any random color. I would very much so like to paint it in a color that matches this one. Now I don't really know what color it actually is, but I have done some tests and using three different types of hammer finish type paints, I was able to get something after a few tests. I was able to get something that is very similar. And I've been smart enough to write the proportions down, so we're now gonna go ahead and mix ourselves some paint in hopefully the right color. I'm gonna use a syringe to suck up a little bit of the paint here. So I'm gonna put in 65 grams of silver, 24 grams of green, and 11 grams of blue. And now we'll just mix all this together really well. So I'm actually really happy with the way the color turned out and I'm gonna try and use a small brush and patch up all the small little blemishes that are in the paint right here. Alright, so it's been about a day and a half since we painted the color that I mixed up. This stuff really takes quite a long time to dry. It's dry enough now. I've assembled the table and I've also put the entire drill press on this rolling stand. So it's now time to mount the table for good. I'm just gonna tighten this down here so that everything is secured and then we'll level it once everything else is done. So now that we have a nice big and sturdy table, it's time to deal with this thing here that doesn't wanna return up. And the reason why it doesn't wanna do that is that there's a whole bunch of parts missing from in there. So I've got the cover that goes on here, like so, and somehow inside of there, there's supposed to be a spring that hooks onto a little nubbin on the inside here and a little nubbin on the inside there. And then this thing somehow is wound up in there and makes sure that it returns. So after quite a bit of wrestling with this thing, I finally got that spring in there. And I really hope that this is the right way of attaching it. And I'm also gonna head and mounted this plate. And now I'm hoping that this little hook will catch as soon as I put this guy in here. And then I can use the Allen wrench and hopefully tighten. Ha, ha, look. And then there's a little set screw in there that I can lock it in place once the tension is good enough. Haha! 
So now that this thing actually returns properly, we need to deal with this handle. Well, not only is this handle pretty rusty, so it doesn't really slide back and forth that well, so we need to polish this thing up a bit, but also it has one missing knob. And I searched around on the internet for one that looks exactly like this, and I couldn't find one. So I thought, what do you have 3D printers for? So I printed one. So as you can see, they are very similar, but obviously the 3D printed one has some lines in it from the printing. But we can fairly easily take care of those slight imperfections from the 3D print by using the handle as a holder for holding this thing in device. And then we're just gonna use some sandpaper and as the light is spinning around, we can get a nice smooth and even finish on the plastic part. Oh, and we're also gonna use the lathe to get a bit of a nicer finish on that handle. All right, we've got a shiny new shaft that will now slide easily through here. And now we've also got two knobs. And my only problem right now is that the uh, new one looks nicer than the old one. Okay, so these should all just screw together, no problem. And in no time, we should have this assembled. And just make sure that that doesn't knock your teeth out. So you can see that on the other side of the machine here, it has this really cool feature of being able to lock the head and swivel it around. And it also has a height adjustment. The first thing missing is one of these little nubbins. This one is not 3D printed. These are from eBay and they were super cheap. So that one goes on there. We still need to take care of the rusty handle though. But down here, we've got the same exact mechanism, allowing us to raise and lower the table and also swivel it around. But unfortunately here, the rod is missing with the threads on it. So we'll take the other one off and then copy that in the lathe. So this thing is actually super basic. It's just a 10 millimeter rod with two standard M10 threads at the end. So we're just gonna use this, turn it down, put some threads at the end. I'm just gonna use one of these thread cutting tools to put the threads at the end. And then we should have ourselves one more of these out of this one in no time. And just like that, we have both of these handles nicely polished and functioning. So now we can lock and swivel this head here and we can lock and swivel and height adjust here. Now this drill press is pretty cool because it not only has an adjustable table height wise, but I also have some adjustment in the head right here. And that is done with this pretty cool ratchet mechanism. The only problem is that I don't have a handle for it. So. I went ahead and ordered this thing. The only problem is that it doesn't fit. Luckily though, we have that guy right there. And it just so happens that probably one of four millimeters that I own is the exact right size for the hole that I need. So it should be a quite simple matter of just attaching this in here, lining up the cutter with the hole that we've got right here, and then cutting the hole. Ta-da! And just like that, we have a big roll. And with that, we can now lower the head and raise it. Oh, raising it takes more effort. And with that, we're onto one of the very last things I wanna fix about this machine. And that is these old rusty oil ports. You see, these things are great. They make sure that you can easily oil and keep the moving surfaces lubricated. The only problem is that most of them are in a pretty rough condition. So to replace these old broken ones, I got a bunch of new ones.
have it. This thing is finally done. I am super happy with the way this has turned out. I finally got the last little bits and pieces installed. These oilers were a little bit more tricky than I'd hoped. I had to get creative with some of the solutions here and there. I also put the depth stop back on so that I now can set a specific height and it will stop at that height. And also we've got this little lever here installed which easily allows me to take out the chuck and put it back in. The table is also level, which was super easy to do. I just put a straight rod into the chuck right here and then used the 90 degree angle to make sure that that rod was square to the surface here, which it now is. That was super easy to do. The only last thing that I haven't had a chance to fix yet is this switch. I've ordered a new one, but it's gonna take a while to get in, but I managed to wire it up so that it works in one of the directions. <laughs> If you're curious to which switch I was supposed to use for this machine, it will be that one right there. But for now, we'll have to deal with this one. One speed is still plenty since this drill has a gearbox. So this is now in the highest gear. And that's the equivalent of 3,480 revolutions per minute. And we can gear that down all the way down to, with this speed, it's 250. Isn't that cool? So overall, I'm super happy with the way this machine turned out. This project was really fun. We got to do some woodworking, we got to do some painting, we got to mess up some electronics, we got to use the lathe, we got to use the mill. This was just a good mix of a lot of different things. And on that note, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more projects made by me in this workshop, now with a new drill press, please consider subscribing. We are really starting to get set up with a lot of cool machines that we can make tons of cool stuff in the future with. So I hope you wanna join me in this journey of making new cool stuff. As for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.